In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to enable CloudKit functionality in a new application. So let's begin by creating a new Xcode project. This is going to be an iOS application, a single view app. Click Next. The product name could be whatever you would like. For this instance, it's going to be CloudKit Test. Ensure when you're creating your new Xcode project that you change your team to an account that you are an admin on. For Tech Innovator, we are an admin on the University of Missouri Computer Science account, so select that. Organization name and organization identifier should be filled out uniquely. It is absolutely important that these are both unique because ultimately these will be used to create something in CloudKit for us. Um, the bundle identifier is that combined, language Swift, and you could have these checked or not checked depending on your use case for your Xcode project. Click Next and save the project wherever you would like to save the project. If you would like to have a Git repository, make sure you have that checkbox toggled and click Create. Once you have created your new project and saved it, Xcode pops up with the Xcode. Ensure that the team is again a team that you are an admin of. This is absolutely important. Once you do this, navigate to the capabilities tab in the project manager. And it's this one right next to general. Select capabilities. The very first capability is iCloud. This is enabling CloudKit on our Xcode project. So click the toggle to turn it on. There are three different types of CloudKit. You could have Key Value Store, iCloud Documents, or CloudKit itself. Key Value Store, you can save essentially keys and values to those keys. iCloud Documents, you can store documents. In CloudKit, you can store records and record types and entities and zones and things such as that nature. For this, we're going to enable CloudKit by checking CloudKit. It will use a default container unless you specify a different container. When you create and enable CloudKit in a new project and you check CloudKit right here, it will always create a default container for your application using your bundle identifier and project name together. And the container represents what? And the container represents um, the storage of your data. So you can actually share containers with different applications. For example, if you want to share a user database with between multiple different apps, you would have a container for that. And you could even have multiple checked when you have custom containers. So I noticed too that uh, there are little spinners under steps and this is showing that it's enabling the abilities that we're selecting. If we didn't have administrative privileges or we didn't have the ability to enable CloudKit through our developer account, then those checks wouldn't happen, correct? Right, those checks would actually be the red error that says that there's a problem. If that occurs, the very first thing that you should do is go to general and it would probably show you some errors under signing, such as maybe that you need to review a new user agreement, maybe that a provisioning profile couldn't be created. Ultimately, whatever the error is under signing, Xcode will have a button there that says try to fix it. Click that, hopefully that fixes it. Else um, you have an issue and you should probably Google that or double check that the team you're on, that you either are the developer account specifically or that you have admin account access on that team. When you click CloudKit in the Capabilities tab, a new file appears over in the Project Navigator. It's this CloudKit test, that is our project name, dot entitlements folder. When we select this, this has a multiple different plist values. More specifically, it is actually where it stores the information about what containers you're using, what the key value store is using the team identifier prefix with the bundle identifier and things such as this. This entitlements folder actually allows Xcode to realize that you can actually interact with CloudKit. So let's go back to the screen where we enabled the, entitle, or the entitlement originally. So click the project, go from general to capabilities, and iCloud still expanded. 
So I noticed under containers, there's a button that says Cloud Kit Dashboard. What role does that have and what do you need to access it? When you enable Cloud Kit and create the container, you can actually interact with Cloud Kit via the Cloud Kit Dashboard. The Cloud Kit Dashboard, you interact with it just like you would the developer.apple.com um, website. It is a slightly different user interface, but here, when I click it, and it finishes loading. You could sign in with your developer account that you used to create this project. In our instance, it would be Tech Innovator. And here you can see all the containers that you have associated with that cloud kit, that um, developer account. For us specifically, we just created a new container when we created this project. It was um, iCloud.online.techinnovator.cloudkittest. When you select that container, this screen pops up. This screen can show you the data the logs, the telemetry, the public data usage, API access for both development and production. Development is more specifically when you're actually developing the app, you're running the data through um, the simulator, things like that. Production is actually the data related to your app on the app store. The telemetry shows you the utilization with the sharing with the databases and push events. Public database usage shows you the active users, the request per second, asset transfer, and database storage. And ultimately, this is the screen that you would go to to see if you're about to go over on your usage for CloudKit. CloudKit is free to a certain extent. It allows you to scale per user free model. Um, so as long as you have users, you will probably never go over that those limits, but if you want to check that out, that's through the public database usage. The one that is most particularly interesting with the CloudKit dashboard is the data tab. The data tab, when you click it, shows you all the available records that you have in both the private database of this developer account, only the private data of the single developer, not all private data for everyone using your app. It can also show you the public database or the shared databases that you have shared throughout other users that have access to your data. CloudKit dashboard also shows you the record types. These are the records that actually exist, types of the records that exist in your database. It'll also show you the indexes on these records um, to better query your records um, and subscriptions and a few other things. So go back to zones again. Um. When we do our work to um, create zones, these zones will be listed here, is that right? Correct, so you can either create new zones here right now, or you can list the zones that currently exist. We don't have any right now, but zones are a way to, um, how would you phrase it? Segment now? the data. Segment the data. I create was, collections of data. Yep, you stole the words right out of my mouth. The interesting thing about this dashboard is you don't actually have to have the record types um, created via the code, you can actually create new record types via the dashboard. For example, I just created a create new type. I could change the name to, let's call this expense. I'm gonna press enter to save that. And I can actually add new fields to this custom type, like the name of the expense of field type string, and I can save this record type. Now we've had this record type. Now we can always interact with this record type. We always have our name field attribute. And I can even create dummy data inside of our CloudKit um, dashboard by going over to Records tab, Create New Record. The name is actually a CloudKit um, identifier. identifier, type of expense in our private database in our default zone. We could have also created a new zone for this. And here we have our fields. This is our attribute name that we've created. And I could say, um, hello world 
expense. And now I can save this data. And now it's saved. I can exit out and I can actually query this data via the CloudKit dashboard. When you click query records, what happens? When I click query records, we're gonna have an error. There was a problem querying the expense type. Type is not marked as indexable. So when this error appears, what you need to do is click OK first off, go over to the records type tab, select the record type that you just had the error with, go over to the record name, click view indexes over on the right hand side, select that, add an index for record name, index type should be queryable, it's the default value, save the record type, we now have this index. I could go back to records now. I could click query records and notice we now have a record that appears. I could even expand it. There we go. When you click it, it took a second, but it shows us all the values for all of our records that we have saved in both code and via the CloudKit dashboard with the record name being the reference identifier for CloudKit, the type of the record, our name, this is our custom attribute, and then the change tag, when it was created, and when it was last modified. So let's, let's review again setting queryable because it looks like that's a really important uh, step that we're always gonna deal with. So uh, we had a new type we created. Where did you set it to record type? You went to the record types and then you went to record name. So very first off, I went to the records type tab. Once you select that, make sure you have the record type selected that you are trying to query. Select that. So let's say I was on user. I'm going to select expense because this is the record type I want to query. Then I go to the record name. This is the attribute that we need to have an index on to be queryable. Go over to view indexes. And then that's where we added the new one. So this is essentially the indexes tab. Over here it says show indexes for type. You can click expense here. Click add index. Your index should be for record name, single field, queryable. I'm going to click the X in this instance because we don't want two indexes of the same type. But once you have that, click save record type. This new index will be added. And we can now go back to the records tab and click query records and we can now see all of our records. So one final thing, the first screen we came into where we kind of had a dashboard, um, is that it up there? So if I click this, I could go back to this dashboard. Is this the one you were referring to? Uh, and then there was one level above it, so that's that icon there. This is the CloudKit dashboard, you could click this. Okay, so from there to find this one, we scroll down to this is where the new one we created, and then this is where we managed it. Right. And I wanted to also see what was under container permissions. So this is uh, per person? Per person. Interesting. So we could, in fact, create uh, entities, add data, query data from within this environment. All from within this environment, we can do all the things that we could be able to do in code.